What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. We're back with another my thoughts and opinions videos on this year's SummerSlam. And man, this was a really good show. As y'all can tell, my voice is gone. So that means it was definitely a fun show. I enjoyed it from top to bottom. Definitely a, a, a SummerSlam to remember. Um, honestly, if I had to be honest with y'all, I think this SummerSlam definitely was better than the one from last year. And it was it was just really, really good. Great matches. Great storytelling. Um, shout out to everyone that was a part of the live stream reactions on YouTube and Twitch. And we got to give a special shout out to the homie Chisel Adonis. As you see, this beautiful hardware right here. This is the smoking um, bone and uh, skull and bones. Um championship wwf championship from the attitude era that stone cold had i always wanted this championship belt um as a kid and chisel hooked us up he hooked me up with the bowling um, bull, um bowl. i can't even talk i'm so excited the skull and bone smoking uh the smoking uh, skull and bowl championship and he hooked up dub with the the Brahma Bull Championship that they never released. But, you know, he knows Stone Cold is my favorite wrestler. And he also knows The Rock is Dub's favorite wrestler. And th these, these were truly amazing. <laughs> we didn't know this was going to happen. So, shout out to the homie Chiseled for once again just showing out. He didn't have to do this. He really uh, surprised us. We didn't know this was going to happen on a live stream. So, of course... I have to wear this baby for at least this particular video. I'm going to hang it up in the wall behind me. All right. So, of course, we got to talk about what happened on this show. And a lot happened. I'm going to get into the details as best as I can. I took some notes as best as I could because we was just excited. The entire show. Bear with me. My voice sounds like shit. But, hey, I'm getting this video out to y'all as soon as possible. So, we're going to get to the, the main event. I'm not even going to make y'all wait because you know what we got to talk about. We got to talk about the main event between Cody and Solo, how everything played out. Now, the match started off particularly slow. Um, crowd was into it, but, you know, it, it wasn't, I wouldn't say, it. they weren't making as much noise. <laughs> Granted, a lot wasn't happening at the beginning of this match between Solo and Cody. I do like the fact of what they were doing with Solo, though. So, they had Solo be very aware of what Cody was doing. The commentary was putting over the fact that Solo probably studied some films, studied Cody's matches, and what to be aware of. So, when Cody's trying to do old school classic moves that you know Cody would do, Solo would counter them. You know, when Cody's trying to go for the uh, the springboard Cody cutter, you know, he would get caught into a power bomb. You know, when he's trying to, you know, do his classic moves, he would get caught. And at every turn at the beginning of this match, Solo was really in control in the sense of being able to be aware of what Cody may do and and pretty much keep the pace of the match where he wanted it to be. And truly, it was enjoyable. I like what they did with that. Granted, it was a really slow pace, but I like that they they made Solo seem like he knew what he was doing. He had a plan for Cody and was, you know, ready to, you know, try to do whatever he needed to do to, to you know, kind of get Cody off of his game. Um, let me check some of these notes, see um, what I have put down. I said Solo had been prepared for this match. Um, at one point, Solo was hung up in the in the corner and uh solo was talking trash like kind of what roman would do uh he told him loudest day i'm gonna beat your ass in front of your family ultimately cody was able to uh get out of the that uh perils that dangerous situation and of course you knew this was a bloodlines rule match so you knew that the bloodline was going to get involved and that's when tamatonga and tonga loa Got involved, started beating up Cody, hit a, a some tag team moves on Cody, and Cody kicked out. And if you watch the first Bloodlines match, Bloodlines Rules match at WrestleMania, Cody was kicking out of everything, and that's exactly what was happening here. So once the Tongans got involved, that's when KO music hit. 
KO comes down the ring, starts packing them up. Then Randy Orton comes down to the ring to assist Kevin Owens, and they essentially neutralize Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa while also packing up, um, uh, you know, getting in some some good shots on on Solo. I believe KO even uh, went to the top rope and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, crashed on uh, Solo, and Solo still was able to kick out, and that's when Randy and KO, they decided to focus their attentions on the Tongans. So, you knew Jacob Fatu was not too far behind. So, Cody ended up getting the um, the up the upper hand. Cody's about to hit the, the triple crossroads, and that's when uh, he hits two of them, and that's when Tama Tonga, I'm not talking about Tonga, Jacob Fatu comes out there and starts giving out the beats to Cody, start packing them up, hitting them with his, you know, the, the same stuff he hit him uh, DIY with on Friday night, that, that sequence of the Samoan drop and going to the top ropes and diving from the top rope, and you thought it was over, he dragged over Solo's body to cover um uh, Cody, for the one, the two, Cody kicks out as we expected. So now Jacob's about to pack this nigga up for real this time. Clears off the announce table, puts Cody on there. Cody knows all about this. Jacob Fatu goes to the top rope and hits a crazy monstrous high splash from the top rope to the ring announce table down below. But here's the dangerous part. As the table broke, it looked like Jacob fought to his shin, like his shin, um, shin on, on, I don't know if, I think it may have been his right leg. I could have been wrong, but he hit his shin on the edge of the table. You can see it. And he was visibly in pain. He tried to stand up. He couldn't, you can tell, you know, he was, he was pissed off and he was in real pain. He couldn't stand up like, and that essentially took him out the match. Now, obviously I don't think that was planned for him to get hurt like that. Maybe to sell the injury of taking himself off the match, but I don't think that was planned. Um, but there were people saying on Twitter uh, they saw him limping to the back, and then some some other reports saying that he, you know, he's he's okay, so it's nothing too serious. We'll see. Um, I'm sure people will update us overnight. Hopefully, it's not. But such a brutal spot. Duke Jacob fought to essentially took himself out. That's how you kind of keep him looking strong. He took himself out, essentially. So, after Cody got packed up once again by Jacob Fatu, um, he ended up getting uh, thrown into the ring. And this is where things really started to pick up. Because Jacob Fatu did his job. Cody is pretty much incapacitated. Solo looks like he's about to win and um, here's another part I forgot to mention. As he gets back in, as they throw him back in the ring, Solo goes to the top rope, hits a splash. You think it may be over. And it's a close, a close two count. Solo can't believe it. Cody kicked out of being hit with a splash from the, from the ring to the announce table and then hit with another splash from Solo himself. Cody... Showing why he's resilient and he ain't losing anytime soon. So after that happened, that's when you heard Roman's music. Now, we couldn't really hear it in the live because we started marking out. We started going crazy. We heard the rumors. We were hoping Roman was going to be there. And we heard his theme music. But it's different now. It's changed. It's not what it was before. I'm going to go back and watch that last few minutes of the match it's, it's different, so I can get a better hearing of it. But it was cool to see that, to see Roman back out there, aura over 9,000, looking so damn cool. Solo's face of shock was perfect. He walks down to the ramp. Yeah, a long way, though. Crowd's going crazy. Huge pop when Roman came out there, bro. He's finally making his way down to the ramp. He runs into the ring, charges up a nice Superman punch on Solo, and then he's in the corner, and he's charging up. He goes for the spear. He hits the ooh ah. Crowd hits it with him, and he hits a beautiful spear on Solo. And he looks at Cody. Cody's in shock at this point, selling it. 
looks at Cody, kind of gives him like a little bit of a nod, and he gets out the ring. And he's just looking, just looking at Cody. And Cody can't believe it. So Cody gets over there, picks up Solo, and every the entire time he's looking at Roman. Roman's still looking at him. Hits the crossroads on Solo for the one, the two, the three, and Cody retain the undisputed WWE Championship. And what made this moment so dope, and I was hoping they were going to do this, and I have been saying, please do this, is Roman and Cody just had that standoff. No words were said, but everything was said, if that makes any sense. Roman and Cody looking at each other. Cody got this look like, hey, if you want to go, we can go. If you want to run this, I'm ready for you whenever you want to. And Roman just got that, that little cool, chill look like, we ain't friends. I just had to regulate. I had to, you know, regulate some business. He even pointed at his shirt. And on his shirt, it says OTC, the original tribal chief. And he even pointed at his shirt, just like, you know, I had to take care of some things. But uh, it was just that look of like, I may be seeing you soon. I may be coming for that. I may be, I may be trying to get that back. You know, right now I have to take care of some things, but we'll see how things play out. I, it ain't over between us. I love that. Just no words were said. So damn good. And you saw Solo in the back with uh, Jacob Fatu. He's just crying. Not literally, but just, you know, Solo was basically doing, if y'all remember when Roman Reigns lost to, when Jay pinned uh, Roman, in that tag team match and how Roman, you know, that was the first time he had pin, been pinned in like three years. And he just had that moment, that manic episode when he was yelling. That's the same thing Solo was doing. Overall, this was fantastic. The match started off slow, but you knew Bloodline Rules, it was going to pick up. And it was it was just fantastic, man. It was, it was great. I enjoyed it for what it was. And Cody ended up retaining. And now, SmackDown. It's definitely the interest in SmackDown has peaked up tenfold now that Roman's back. Uh, hopefully, he'll be back on the, on this week's upcoming SmackDown, and we got to figure out what Solo's going to say. We also got to figure out what the rest of the Bloodline's going to say because Solo didn't get the job done, but the Bloodline members still have the tag titles. What's going to happen? What's Roman going to say? That is really what I'm interested in, so... This was great. Love what they did here. Great main event. And we got the original Tribal Chief back in Roman Reigns. All right. Now, we're going to start from the top of the show because we got to talk about just some of the good stuff that happened tonight. And they started off the show with Liv versus Rhea. This was a perfect start to a show. 10 out of 10. This was Liv's best match. And Rhea looked good out there in her return match. In my opinion, this is Liv's best match. This was good. It worked. Uh, Liv started off with the cat and mouse games. Liv, essentially, every time Rhea would try to get her hands on her, Liv would roll out the ring. They kept doing that for a few minutes, and then Rhea finally caught her and then started beating the living crap out of Liv. Just beating her like a government mule, as JR would say. So, Liv's beating her up. And yeah, at one point she starts taunting. She Liv uh, is, you know, on the steel steps and Dominic's on the outside and Dominic, you know, Rhea, Rhea ends up licking once again Dominic on the face in front of Liv and then started, proceeds to beat her up even more. Dominic's really the, will, the real winner here. We're going to talk about what happened there. So um, at one point, um, Liv started targeting Rhea's shoulder. And then she targeted her shoulder on one end, one end of the ring, and then lived through Rhea into a turnbuckle. But it looked like her shoulder had got dislocated because she was saying, "It's out, it's out." And when you looked at it, it was like a large lump on her shoulder. So it looked like it was dislocated. Some were saying it, it could have been a work. I don't know, but it looked like it was dislocated because the way. The shoulder had protruded. It was like a lump on it. So 
She's trying to fight through the rest of the match, you know, with a messed up shoulder and live as she should, being a good heel, targeting it. Kept targeting it, trying to really injure her as much as possible. And at one point, and this this made Rhea look like a complete badass. Rhea's outside the ring. She's in immense amount of pain. And she literally turns around and rams her shoulder right into the announce desk to pop it back in place. Such a cool fucking moment. And Liv so like, what the fuck? Because it was, it was a shock. It was really, that was a really good moment. Liv so did like, Oh, who is this person? And then, obviously, Rhea tried to get the upper hand there as much as possible. So, we're going to get to the end of the match. So, Liv, Rhea has lived dead to rights. Rhea has lived dead to rights. She hits the Riptide on Liv. The match is essentially over. Because at one point in the match, uh, Liv brought in a steel chair to try to use it. But the chair was still in the ring. So, Rhea decides to pick up the chair. And Rhea is about to essentially end her career, but she would get disqualified and lose the match. So, Dominic stops her. He, as she's about to swing the chair, Dominic stops her. And he's like, no, don't do that. You're going to get disqualified. And for the first time ever, Dominic was being smart and reasonable. We, like, people were agreeing with Dominic. Oh, well, she, he's right. Don't do that. But... Rhea, uh, Liv takes advantage of the distraction, kicks both of them off the ring. Uh, so they fall. Then uh, Liv um, gets back, or uh, uh, Liv's get Rhea back into the ring. And it was a close near uh, near fall between um, Liv and uh, Rhea Ripley. It looked like she was going to steal the win off that distraction, but Rhea kicked out. So now the... And here's where things get good. So Dominic gets the chair, throws it in there, and he's trying to distract the ref. It looks like he's giving it to Rhea, but then Dominic points at Liv to get the chair. So Liv, like he points at Liv to look at the chair, look at the chair. So that's when Rhea, uh, Liv hits her finishing move on to... Um, Onto the steel chair, hits Rhea with the finishing move. Onto the steel chair, the ref didn't see it. And then that's how Rhea ends up losing to Liv and Liv ends up retaining because of the assist from Dominic. And there's a shot where you see Dominic, he's smiling. So, you already know, uh-oh, I think the turn has happened. I think that we're, we're, we're getting the turn because he's smiling. We cut back. Liv is standing outside the ring. Rhea's looking like, you know, looking at Liv. And then Dominic's right, standing right next to Liv. He turns to Liv, pulls her close, and starts kissing on her passionately. He's looking her in the eyes. He grabs her face and kisses on her passionately as Rhea watches. And this was so damn good. I wasn't expecting him to turn. I thought... He was going to essentially cost the match accidentally. And then the turn was going to happen later. But they pulled the trigger. R Dominic turned on Liv, on Rhea, and cost her the match. And Liv got her revenge. Not only did Liv injure Rhea, not only did she essentially um, take the title away from her and she couldn't get it back, she broke Rhea's heart. That's all she wanted. And now... Dominic has aligned himself fully with Liv Morgan, and he was flipping off the crowd. Great booze. This was good. Monday Night Raw is must watch because as one of the last shots is Rhea seething. It's like, oh, my God. Rhea is going to kill, legitimately kill Dominic and Rhea. And it's going to be great. So they cut to a backstage segment where Damian was – pissed he came into the judgment day clubhouse kicked over a chair he's pissed because he's like where the fuck is that little weasel at where's dominic where the hell is dominic because he screwed over Rhea. and he's like hey man we need to find him and then he started to blame Finn's like finn did you know about this and then finn's like yo how could you even say that 
So it, they started playing the seeds with Finn there. Like, how could you even say that, bro? Like, that that wasn't the case. So I love what they were doing there. They were playing seeds for what happened later on at the night. He accused them essentially of knowing what's going on. And then Finn was like, no, nah, I'm going to try to find them. And, uh, you know, Damien tried to apologize, but Finn had already left. Next, Sammy versus Braun. This was a very quick match. I was not expecting that at all. Um, but I understand they were giving a lot more time to other things. And I think the story they were trying to tell with Braun here was that he was going to take things a lot more seriously with Sammy this time. And he did. As soon as the match started, um, Braun was trying to end it with a spear. Sammy was able to counter it. And it was more or less Sammy trying to, you know, counter Braun, uh, Braun Breaker's moves. But ultimately, Braun was able to get the best of him. I didn't even really take too many mo notes in this match because the match didn't really last that long. Um, Braun ended up getting some speed off the ropes. Hit Sammy with the spear for the one, two, three. And Braun is your new Intercontinental Champion. This was the first title change of the night, and it wasn't the last. Honestly, I'm okay with it. Could the match have been much better for sure? But I think for them, the story was Braun is such a good um, competitor. He didn't take him seriously the first time. Now he took him seriously this time, and he packed him up efficiently. So that was a great... Um, I'll, I'll say it was okay. It was an okay uh, Intercontinental Champion match, uh, Intercontinental Championship match, but overall, things happened the way they were supposed to happen. I'm guessing maybe they were trying to save some time, but it was okay. It was okay. Nothing to go home about. Next, Logan Paul versus LA Knight. This was great. This was really, really good. They started off hot. Um, LA Knight stole um, Logan Paul's prime truck on SmackDown, so he brought it to the show. And he ended up busting the wind, one of the windows out with like some type of pipe. And then he walked down to the ring. I thought that was cool. As soon as they, before the bell even started, they started fighting. I loved it. Showed that they don't really like each other. Started brawling. Um, They were fighting all over this, just the, the outside ring area. It was good to see. Um, You had, uh, fuck you, Logan Chance. Even in his hometown crowd, they didn't give a damn. Fuck you, Logan chance love to hear it there was a beautiful elbow drop from the top row from la night and one thing i can say about this match they were hitting some fantastic moves and they look good the springboard moonsault from logan paul to la night as he's outside the ring chefs that was beautiful normally he could have ran the ropes jumped over the top rope no he saw la night on the outside of the ring he literally hit a beautiful springboard moonsault from the top row. Just jumped up, boom, flipped off. It was beautiful. Such a beautiful shot. It's one thing about Logan. He going to make some memorable moments that you can be like, damn. May not like him. He may be scamming some people. But the dude is fantastic in the ring. It was also a super flex from the top rope from, uh, um, from LA Knight to uh logan paul and it looked it looked like uh logan it was you know kind of landed on the head and neck region very devastating stuff um towards the end you knew logan was going to get a hold of some brass knucks this time it was from the assistance of mgk of all people mgk gave him a brass nut and the ref didn't see it but it didn't look like logan got all of it hit him on the top of the head and he was about to go for the buckshot lariat to finish the match but uh, L.A. Knight was able to recover, reversed it into the BFT for the one, the two, the three. And L.A. Knight is your new United States champion. It's about time. The second uh, title change of the night. Love what they did here. Very fun match. And it's good to see the United States championship will be seen more on SmackDown and defended more regularly going forward. L.A. Knight needed this win, and this was great to see. Next, Nia versus Bailey. Wasn't really too excited about this match, to be honest with you. The build was okay, but I think a lot of other builds were much better in comparison. But it was an okay match. It wasn't awful by any means. In my opinion, it was one of the lower spots of the show. But I will say there was some oppressive stuff in here. Bailey powerbombing Nia from the top rope as Nia was on the top rope. 
Bailey picking her up, walking her closer to the middle of the ring, the amount of strength to pick up Nia and hit with a beautiful power bomb. Such a good, such a good spot. Love that. Um, Tiffany had came out there with a referee, looked like she was going to cash in, and that's when Bailey ended up knocking her and stopping that from happening. And towards the end of the match, Anaya started power bombing, power slamming Bailey over and over and over, dragged her to the corner because early in the match, that that's um, I don't know the name of the move, so somebody comment down below. I'm sure y'all know. Anaya's finishing move where she goes to like the second rope to essentially squash you, essentially. She did it earlier in the match, and Bailey kicked out. But this time, Nia said, no, nah, you're not kicking out. She did it multiple times, a few times, and then finally, finally, Nia ended up winning with the one, two, three pin, and Nia is your new women's champion. That is the third title that switched hands tonight. And there's a theme clearly with this show and what they were trying to essentially tell overall. It was an okay, okay match. Nothing too crazy. But I will say I like the fact towards the end as Nia is celebrating with um, with uh, Tiffany Stratton, Tiffany's looking at the championship. She's As she's holding Nia's hand, she's looking up at the championship. She has her eyes on it. So that may play into things going forward in the future. Can't wait to see how that plays out. So next, the match that we were all waiting for. Drew versus CM Punk. Seth comes out there in his flamboyant ref's gear. Drew comes out there, you know, in his gear. CM Punk comes out there. And this was everything we were anticipating. And I love that Seth was trying to separate them before the match even started. Crowd wanted them to get at it. And when the bell finally rung, they finally got at it. At one point, CM Punk is stomping Seth in the corner repeatedly, not listening to the ref count. And then Seth is like, hey, bro, get it together. Stop it. Listen to me. Then at one point, Drew is punching CM Punk in the opposite corner repeatedly and that's when Seth has to step in again. And he's like, listen to me. I'm the ref. Um, I also like Seth's role in here. Because there were certain points where Drew was on the outside by the steel steps. And CM Punk is essentially about to start banging his head on the steel steps. He looks up at Seth. And Seth's like, he just turns away. And CM Punk starts banging his head over and over and over on the steel steps. Then there was another point where Drew has um, CM Punk under the ring, like his head and neck under the ring. And he's holding his feet. So, you know, he's about to do like that, that little seesaw maneuver to like where you launch someone. But obviously, he's right under the railing of the ring. He looks at uh, Seth. Seth is like, uh, go ahead and proceeds to hit him with the move. Love Seth's interaction as a ref. He's just like, whatever. But eventually he starts to step in. Seth was, you know, encouraging the, st uh, the crash out at the beginning of this match. Um, he also uh, told Drew, um, see, um, Drew told Seth that he had got, grabbed a steel chair and he told Seth, because CM Punk is kind of, you know, he at that after that whole spot, CM Punk is kind of delirious. He's off balance. He's swinging and missing. So Drew's about to crash out. He has the steel chair, and he told he told Seth, "Hey, just turn around. No one will fault you. Just turn around and let this happen." So Seth's about to turn around. Drew's about to crash out, and then that's when Seth gets the chair. He throws it down. He's like, "Nah, it's going too far." He's going too far and you need to chill out. So, at this point in the match, and this was very smart and strategic of Drew, Drew pulls out the bracelet. He pulls out the bracelet and then, you know, they start to get into it and CM Punk ultimately gets Drew in the Anaconda Vice, right? And he has him in the Anaconda Vice. Looks like Drew is in agonizing pain as you love to see. But then he sees the bracelet he sees that drew has the bracelet on so he takes off the bracelet 
and whatnot. He takes off the bracelet, and this has become the distraction for him. Um, uh, I forgot at one point, um, I forgot how it happened, but he ended up losing the bracelet and the bracelet's in the ring. So Seth picks it up and puts it on, you know, he, he picks it up, he puts it on, but it wasn't to spite CM Punk. It was just to kind of get it out the way to have. So as CM Punk's about to get the upper hand, he ends up looking at Seth with the bracelet on his hand, on his wrist. And he's like, wait, what the hell? Like, what's what's going on here? Seth's like, bro, bro, it's not like that. Like, what are you doing? And then that's when it, it, it ends up being a distraction. Seth ends up um, getting knocked out of the way. And then it becomes a pinning uh, um, situation where he, um, CM Punk ends up getting the GTS, hitting the GTS on Drew, and the match is over. The match is over. Drew is knocked out. This is after he sees Seth with the, the bracelet. Drew is knocked out at this point. And But Seth is out the ring because he got knocked out. He finally gets back into the ring, and he goes for the one, the two, but Drew kicks out. Now, CM Punk is pissed. He's like, you got my bracelet on. You're not being a good referee. He even said it audibly. You're as good as you're, you're, you're a bad referee, ref, referee just like you are as a wrestler. Like, what the hell? Are you trying to screw me? You're trying to, you know, mess me over? And he's getting in his face. And Seth is like, hey, bro, calm your ass down. Nigga, this is, you know, this is my ring as, as the ref. Like, he's going off on CM Punk. We don't need you. We don't ever want you. Just going off. CM Punk's like, all right. He turns around. Picks up Seth and hits the GTS on Seth, knocking him out. He proceeds to get the bracelet from him, puts it on his wrist. But once again, this cost him. This cost him a lot. Because as he's about to go finish off Drew, Drew hits CM Punk with a low blow. The same thing that CM Punk did to Drew at Money at all. Uh, Clash at the castle. Did the same thing to him there. And from there, he ends up uh, hitting the uh, the Claymore for the one. And and at this point, what was, I like, uh, attention to detail here. I like what they did with Seth. Because Seth, and, you know, Drew has to win, essentially. Seth finally comes to, he goes for the pin combination for the one. It's real slow for the two. The last pin was really, really slow. But he had to count it, and then he hit the three. And it was over. CM Punk lost to Drew McIntyre because CM Punk lost focus. He was focused on the bracelet. He was focused on Seth Rollins and not on Drew like he should have. The same thing that Drew was when he was focusing on CM Punk. I love that. Love the parallels of the story there. And at the end, he takes off the bracelet from CM Punk, puts it back on his wrist, he kisses it, and he walks away. This feud's not over, obviously. And uh, I predicted Drew needed this win. It made sense. It wasn't really a clean win. It wasn't. Drew cheated. Seth didn't see it. And also, CM Punk screwed himself over essentially because he took out Seth. If he never would have took out Seth and would have calmed down and focused, he would have won. But he Drew knew what he was doing. He knew he was going to lose his temper and lose his focus when he pulled out the bracelet. Great storytelling. Love this match. Can't wait to see what happens on Monday Night Raw and what's going to happen leading into these next coming pay-per-views because or PLEs because this is not done. And finally, Gunther versus Damien. Man, this was a hard-hitting match from top to bottom. This was good. When I say Damien started off the match, start giving out Gunther the beats with the elbows, the forearms, it was fantastic. Even at one point, Damien made Gunther bleed with the, the chop to the chest. Gunther was bleeding. Uh, Gunther, uh, Damien was giving Gunther the kicks, but also... Gunther was 
putting in some work too. Stiff shots, stiff uh, hits to the chest. And towards the end of the match, Damian was getting getting packed up because Gunther was starting to get the advantage. He was beating them up. He was gloating to the crowd. There was nothing that Damian could really do. Towards the uh, end of the match, Finn Balor comes out there to support his friend. Oh, I forgot to mention prior to that, there was another segment before the match where Finn Balor came back and, you know, Damien tried to apologize and like, I'm sorry. And Finn's like, it's no problem. And Finn was like, hey, man, if you need any help out there, I know you don't, but if you need me out there, just let me know I got you. And, and Damien's like, it's all good. I appreciate that. So Finn comes out there to support his friend. Gunther sees it. And he, he's talking to Finn like, what you going to do about it? Nothing. And then he essentially, uh, Gunther ends up kicking Finn away from the ring, knocking him over. And Damian Priest sees this, and that's when he gets pissed. Gunther starts chopping him, hitting him. Nothing's affecting Damian. Damian is pissed. Then he starts charging up. Hits uh, Gunther with the razor edge, the south from heaven. He's going crazy. He ends up hitting these moves, and Gunther's trying to roll to the edge of the ring to get out the ring, but Damian Priest stops him. It looks like Gunther is about to lose, the, and Damian's in the pinning combination for the one, the two, and then Finn Balor puts Gunther's foot on the bottom rope and stops the pin. Crowd's going crazy like, oh, shit. Damian didn't see it until he looked at the replay. He looked at the replay and he saw what happened and he can't believe what Finn Balor has done and Finn Balor has this mean, evil look of what he did just staring a hole in the, in the Damian Priest and then that's when he gets distracted. Gunther goes in for the for the choke and whatnot and, then, and the way he was positioned and laying, Finn Balor's looking at him. Damian Priest is reaching out and it looks like that's the last thing he's going to see. His friend has screwed him over. But then he fights back. He gets back. He stands back up. And Finn Balor can't believe it. He's able to get free. And then he's looking at Finn. And he goes for Finn. He's choking him. But then once again, Gunther capitalizes off the distraction, puts him in the chokehold again, gets him in the middle of the ring, and Damian Priest passes out. And you have your new world heavyweight champion. And that is the fourth title change for SummerSlam tonight. And it was a great match. And I wasn't sure. if We knew the Finn turn was coming. I just didn't think it was going to be at SummerSlam. But you know what? This, is, this was great. Great. Now Gunther is your new world heavyweight champion. And most likely Gunther is not going to be losing the title <laughs> anytime soon and the fact that Finn Balor just sitting there staring a hole into Damien because he's glad at what he did was fantastic I, I do feel like Damien is going to try to murder him but I think what would be better and what we're going to probably get Damien Priest is going to screw over Finn Balor in the judgment day and they're going to lose those tag titles really soon so that way then Damien Priest can get even. Like, you screw me, I'm going to screw you over too. Can't wait. And uh, overall, this was a great show. Great show. I didn't do the show justice. I didn't take every single note that I could have. It was just too much going on. Go watch it. Go watch it for yourself. Great SummerSlam. I'm going to give this um, solid eight and a half, nine. Solid eight and a half, nine. You can even give it a nine and a half. This was a really good SummerSlam, really good show. But comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite match of, your, of the show. What was your least favorite match of the show? What you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10? And are you excited to see what's going to happen on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown this upcoming week? Y'all let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support y'all have shown on the champ channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.